hey guys welcome back to another video in the c sharp best practices video series if you haven't watched the previous videos then you can do that by going through the links given in the description of this video it is not really required to watch this series from the beginning because the videos are not really related to each other so you can watch this series in whichever order you like and without wasting any more time let's get started with this video so the first best practice for this video which I'm going to talk about is never have a public constructor in an abstract class. So what happens is whenever we create a new class then out of habit we tend to create a public constructor for that class. But when we are creating an abstract class then it is really not necessary to create a public constructor because we will not be able to create an object out of that class. In this code there are two classes. the person and the employee so person is the abstract class and the employee is inheriting the functionality of the person class now you can see that there is a public constructor over here but this constructor is really useless because if we will try to create an object out of this person class then we will not be able to do that because the compiler will throw an error so why the compiler is not throwing an error when we are actually adding a public constructor to it i don't know maybe there is some reason to it but it is not really necessary to have this constructor what will happen is whenever this employee object will be created then this constructor will also be called but for that constructor to be called it is not really required to have this constructor as a public one we can also declare it as a protected constructor so that this child class will be able to access this constructor too. We also don't need to place an empty constructor in the abstract class but if we want to place some logic to initialize the abstract class then we can use the protected access modifier for this constructor. The second one is lines should be small and readable instead of being too long. So it should be common knowledge by now that we should never write long lines of code because it makes them harder to understand. It is also time consuming when someone is scrolling through the code and they have to scroll horizontally to read the entire line of code to understand its entire purpose. Over here there is a method which is returning an integer value by adding a number of different values. Now you can see that this line is pretty long and to see all of the properties which are being added we have to scroll all the way to the right horizontally. Now there are two possible solutions which we can do to rectify this situation. The first one is we can have all of these different values in a new line. The other thing which we can do is we can actually cache the properties which are being used more than once in this entire logic. For example what we can do is we can cache out this client state property like this and then we can simply replace the longer reference with the shorter one and there you go now I guess we can easily have them in a single line now this code is much more cleaner and readable and this entire line can be seen in this single window without the need to scroll horizontally towards the right and this is the ideal situation which everyone should try to achieve. The third one for today is merge nested if statements to improve code readability. So what happens is sometimes we don't realize and we write nested if statements. It doesn't really make sense to write nested if statements if there is only a single if block in the outer if block and I will show you what I'm talking about. In this code example there is an outer if condition and then there is an inner if condition. Now if there is only a single inner if block then what we can do is we can merge these two together like this. so that we can remove the inner if block and 
this entire condition can be merged in a single line now you must be thinking that someone should be really careless to do something like that in the first place but let me tell you in a team environment when developers have so much to do then these kinds of things are pretty common to see and if we are not careful or if we are not using a proper tool to analyze the code for such kind of situations then they go unnoticed and later it is really hard to fix them when the project has made its way into the production setting so that was it for this video guys do let me know what you think about it if you have any questions or suggestions then feel free to use the comments area and of course if you like this video then please don't be shy and place a like and also subscribe to this channel so that you will be the first one to get to know when the new videos will come out i will see you in the next one till then have a great day